Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Liam Douglas here, and in this video, I'm going to be doing the install and program of the Start X remote start system for my 2021 Toyota Corolla. But before we get into that, I wanted to remind you to check out the Liam Photography Podcast. You can find the show anywhere the podcasts are found, and I have a massive back catalog of 364 episodes that you can watch at your leisure. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get into this. I'll try my best to do a step-by-step -step of how you install it based on the instructions from StartX. Um, they do have a video that you can uh, find from their, uh, their, their online store, um, and I'll put a link to that video in the description down below. But we're going to go ahead and get started on this, see if we can't get this bad boy installed and fully operational today. And... Uh, then I'll have remote start in my car, which will be nice because my Rogue had it. Okay, so StartX is nice enough to give us this pry tool in the box. And the first thing we need to do is pry off this side cover here. This has to come off so that we can get to some of the wiring harness components that we need to be able to get to. Um, and then we need to pull down this portion of the dash panel. We got to pop this loose and pull this down so that we can get to the wire harnesses inside. So let me see if I can get that loose now. How the hell do you get this down? No, oh, that thing's tight. Okay, so now that we got this panel down a little bit, I believe the plugs in question so I get my hand in there are these ones back here I don't know how well you can see them but anyways then the next thing you have to do is you have to take all three screws out of the steering column as you can see there's one on this side then you have to rotate the wheel there's one on the other side and then there's supposed to be one in the bottom so you can pop off the bottom cover of the steering column okay I got the first Phillips screw out and now I'm working on the second one for the bottom half of the steering column cover. Let's see if we can get this bad boy out. I apologize, the camera's flopping around. I'm trying to hold everything with just my two hands. I don't have a camera operator or anything like that to help me. Then underneath here, I don't know how well you can see it, but here's the third screw for the bottom half of the steering column cover that we've got to remove. Okay, so now we're gonna do the T-harness installation. So the first thing you have to do is on the left side of the car, on the driver's side, there's going to be three plugs, and you can see a close-up view up in the upper right-hand corner. You're going to pull the second plug out, plug that cord into the T-harness, and then the T-harness has a companion plug with it that goes back into that second slot, the one that's circled in the upper right-hand corner window. Now you're going to pull the third of the three black harnesses in a row, and again, you're going to pop that one out carefully, releasing it so you don't damage any of the wiring. And then you're going to plug that small one into the T-harness, into the female connector. And then you're going to plug the male connector from the T-harness back into that third slot. And that's going to complete that portion of the T-harness connector. Now what we have to do is remove this bolt because we need a ground, a good ground for the T harness. It does have a ground wire with a wire with a metal loop on it. So you're going to loop it over that bolt. And then when you put the bolt back in, you must make sure you get it tight. So I would highly recommend you do it with a ratchet and a socket. Now we're going to pull the wiring harness on the bottom of the key switch ignition assembly on the left hand side of the steering column. Plug that one into the T harness's white connector and then plug the other half back up into the steering column. Now, there is an immobilizer T-harness that is separate. Now, this gets installed behind the passenger side kick panel. So we have to pop the door jam cover on the inside of the door. Just lift it off carefully. Make sure you don't break the clips. And then there's a little nut there that's just a plastic nut. It's only finger tight, so you can just loosen it with your fingers. And that will allow you to remove the kick panel on the passenger side. Now, once you get the kick panel off, there's going to be a wiring block there. We want to remove the top left-hand wiring harness, which is a gray one. 
just pinch to release it and then carefully pop it out. And then you're going to plug that into the immobilizer and then plug the immobilizer from the T-harness back in. Then you're going to fish the wire to the other side, to the driver's side. Now, they show putting it under the carpet. I prefer to zip tie it underneath the dash. I think that's much better. Now, on the driver's side, we have to do the TPMS harness, which is behind the driver's side kick panel. So, again, you're going to lift up the bottom track of covering and then remove the plastic nut and the kick panel. And it's the bottom left-hand white plug that you're going to remove and then plug into the TPMS harness and then plug it back in using the other side and then plug that into the main T harness where it showed there circled in red. So once you have that done, make sure you secure everything with your zip ties. All right, so now for the decryption portion, you need to download the FlashLink Manager software. So on a Windows computer, you can go to remotestartx.com slash FlashLink and download the FlashLink Manager 4.5.1 as the latest version as of this recording. And you're going to download that application and then go ahead and install it on your Windows machine. Now, this software is compatible with all versions of Windows according to the website. So you'll just go ahead and start uh, install it. Once the installer is done, then you have to register for a free account. Now, when you launch the FlashLink Manager software for the first time, it's going to ask you to log in. You're going to click Create an Account. It's going to take you to the website. You're going to fill in the free registration form with your first name, last name, email address. Pick a password. For business name, you can put NA, as well as for website, you can put NA. Uh, choose your country, your state, city and zip code, all that good stuff, and you just mark that you're a consumer, and you do the I'm not a robot thing, click register, it'll tell you your account is registered, but then it sends you an email, so you have to go into your email account and click the activation link. So you go to your email, in this case it's a Gmail account, uh, pull up the account registration email from Fortin, click on that, and it'll generate a key, uh, automatically and you click verify and then click OK and you're good to go with that part. Now you can go back to the FlashLink software, log in with your new account that you just created. Now once you're logged in, you're going to want to go to the little uh, gear icon and switch to pro mode. So click the gear icon in the upper right hand corner of the application window and click the button that says go to pro mode and then continue to pro mode, and it's going to refresh. Now you are ready to plug in the FlashLink hub as well as your StartX remote start box. Now your StartX remote start box has to be completely removed from the car in order to do this portion. So earlier you hooked it up in your car and you went through the physical programming steps. Now we're going through the decryption software steps. And what this does is it links your remote start box to the flash uh, via flash link to the uh, your key fobs. So you're going to go in, click decryptor, click send data. And you have to wait for this to run. Now, if it shows a different vehicle at the top of the screen, don't worry about that. It's pulling the information from your remote start box that you already did the physical programming of when you had it wired into your vehicle. So you're going to go through this step. It'll take a few minutes. And then once it finishes, your box will be good to go. And you'll be able to disconnect it from the computer and take it out and reconnect it into your car. Now, what I recommend doing is once you've done the decryption and everything and you're complete with this step, you can close out this software, go back to your car, plug the box back in, and test it. Now, the window you see now is the wizard window. If you're on that window, you're on the wrong window, so make sure you do go to the pro mode or you're not going to get the box to work properly. And that's it. Okay, so I didn't get to shoot every last bit of the installation. Mine was a little more difficult probably because it's a 2021 Corolla. And the one they used in their video was a 2020. Mine has some additional dash panels on the underside of the dash that the one they were doing in their video did not have. 
or we're missing, whatever the case may be. This kit is for the 2020 all the way up to 2023 Toyota Corollas. And once you get it in, it takes a little bit of time to get everything wired up and then figure out where you're gonna tuck the box to hide it. But once you get it installed, then you have to read the instructions. You have to plug the wire harnesses into the Start X box in a particular sequence while working with the keys and the switch and stuff to program the box physically with its program button. Then when that's done, you have to unhook it from your car, take it back in the house and hook it up to a Windows computer to do the uh, decryption with the software so to link it to your key fobs. Now, I do wanna let my viewers know for whatever reason, the Flash Link software does not work with a Windows virtual machine. I tried that. I have a Windows 11 virtual machine via Parallels desktop on my MacBook Pro, and I would plug in the USB device to program with Flash Link, and it kept saying it wasn't detecting the device, and I couldn't find drivers anywhere on the internet for it. So then I borrowed my wife's Windows 11 Hewlett Packard and it worked just fine. So apparently you can't do it with Windows through a, as a virtual machine. It has to be an actual Windows desktop, or maybe it's just something with Windows 11. I don't know. Um, inside the FlashLink software, it mentions um, drivers for Windows XP and 7, but the download page for the FlashLink says it works with all versions of Windows, so who knows? But anyways, now I'm going to include a link the links in the description down below for the install video that they post uh, that they have on their website that goes to their youtube channel i'm going to share that in the description as well as the programming video with the flash link software that step is critical and you have to follow it to the letter once you have your remote start box hooked up to the flash link update box via USB to your Windows computer and you have the FlashLink software open, you have to click the gear icon in the upper right-hand window of the software and a little pop-up window with settings will come up. You have to select Pro Mode and then click Go to Pro Mode and then you'll have a window with tab two tabs on the left-hand side. The second tab is Decrypt. Click on that and tell it to decrypt your, your key fobs and that'll take quite a few minutes to do. But once it's done, it'll let you know that it's completed you can then disconnect the StartX remote start box from the, the update box, take it back out, hook it back up in your car, tuck it away wherever you want to hide it, or test it first before you tuck it away, and then, you know, finish up. So let's go ahead and test this out. So I do have remote start now in my 2021 Toyota Corolla. So there we have it, it's remote started. Now, one of the things that I discovered about this system versus the one that's in my wife's Nissan, which is a factory Nissan remote start, and the Excalibur model one I had in my Nissan Rogue, which was added on aftermarket, is on both of those systems, you use the lock button three times on your factory key fob to start the vehicle. But on the Nissans, you have to press the buttons three times rapidly. And on this system, you have to press them a little bit slower in order for it to engage the remote starter. But if you get, once you get used to the sequence, then you should be good to go. So now let me shut it back off. And there you have it. I was just able to remotely shut the car back down. So that is going to wrap up this video. I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch it. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, turn on all notifications, and make sure you are subscribed to the channel with notifications because I will be doing another contest soon. Since we didn't have a winner on the last one, I'll be launching a new contest maybe in September or October. So you're definitely going to want to be subscribed to the channel to find out when that new contest starts and how you can enter. All right, that's going to wrap this one up, folks. I will see you next time.